Hey everybody, I'm Becky. And I'm Cam from Seasonal Homestead. We're excited to do our first question and answer video. This video is going to be a little bit different than anything else that we've done before. Usually we try and keep it a little more action oriented, a little less talking. This is going to be all talking. All talk, yeah. <laughs> Over the last couple of days, we have been working on answering questions and you guys had so many good questions yeah. that it was really hard to choose. So we tried to answer as many as possible, but that made it so we were talking for a long time. Even though we were trying to be concise, just didn't always just didn't happen. happen. Yeah. So in lieu of that, I am going to write each question down in the description box of this video with a timestamp so you can link directly to whatever question you're most interested in and would like to hear in case you don't want to listen to us the whole time. First question is, how long have you been homesteading? We've been homesteading, no. Well, <laughs> we have been gardening for 15 years. Uh, homesteading, I would say about eight years ago was when we really started into that, when we got the house that we lived in prior to the one we're in now. It, had, it was on two thirds of an acre. And so we were finally able to expand the garden to a sizable size and add chickens and do more of what we call homesteading and kind of grow more of our own foods. So the next question is a, a good one. They're all good, but if you could open. only give one piece of advice to a new homesteader, what would it be? Uh, the hardest part about this is keeping it to one piece of advice. <laughs> I know, I feel <laughs> like, like there's I, a lot. I've yeah. got like, like two, hey, three or four. <laughs> um, I, I have two, I have two, okay. So, <laughs> I, I cannot keep it to one piece of advice. So one, one thing that I feel like is really important is not giving up when you fail because yeah. you're gonna fail. We fail all the time. And I feel yeah. like we, we try and show that in the video because it happens. Like it just <laughs> it happens so much. There's so many things that you can't control with homesteading. And there's just so much to learn and you learn so much when you fail. So yeah. it's actually a good thing. Can I say my second one? Yeah, fine. Yeah, <laughs> okay, this is, anyways. this is a bonus <laughs> one. Let's just say it's a bonus. Okay. <laughs> Free of charge, bonus. Yeah. Okay, so my bonus piece of advice <laughs> is don't get too caught up in learning before you do it. So I feel like it's really good to read books and to study before you like hop right into something. But at the same time, you can do that a little bit too much. Yeah. I remember when we were going to do pigs and cows, we learned as best we could. And then it was just like, okay, well, we got to just like go for it. And it was such a good thing because once we got the cows and the pigs, it was just like we figured it out yeah. and we learned so much more. Yeah. And then Cam was saying the other day when he, he read this pig book and then he went, we got the pigs and then he went back and read the pig book and he had so much more perspective because yeah. we had just got into it and did it. Yeah. So I think it was, yeah. that's, that's an important thing to yeah. do is just don't get too caught up in learning everything before you jump right in. Just just go for it. So next question was, was it hard to convince your spouse or family to change their way of life? It was not that hard to convince me. I grew up on land in Idaho, not necessarily an, an active farm, but lived in the country and loved that life. So I always wanted to have a farm, but just thought it was not possible because the farms I grew up in in Idaho were giant potato farms with millions of dollars of equipment and infrastructure and unless you were born into a family that <laughs> were potato farmers it just was kind of out of reach and so once Becky got really into gardening and mm -hmm. and that homesteading bug hit her it was not long before we decided this was uh, this was right for our family the other thing that really was a defining moment in that was a book that Becky picked up called 
family friendly farming. <laughs> I went over to the bookshelf and I got it because I feel like this was just like a huge shift in our way of thinking. It, we were going through a really rough time as a family, just really feeling uh, too busy with too many activities that were outside of our home and it made it really stressful for our family and just kind of on a whim I got this book I just bought it used online we read it together as a family out loud and I feel like that was just like the game changer for us this book really confirmed this is the direction we need to head and this is where we need to start thinking more seriously with a purpose with intent and invest more in what we're doing really how are the kids liking the homestead life compared to their previous life yeah that one's fun so we have four kids our oldest right now at the taping of this is 14 years old and then 11 and then 10 and then our youngest girl is uh, seven years old yeah. <laughs> and so it's interesting because our oldest child definitely had a previous life in public school and just kind of was exposed to, you know, city life for lack of a better phrase. And so he still likes that stuff a lot. Mm -hmm. And it's always like, he always is wanting to go into town and I don't know, just, you know, that kind of stuff, which is, which is a stark contrast to our youngest child who really has spent their whole life from how, when they can remember on the farm. And so it's just like no problem for her mm -hmm. because that's just what life is, you yeah. know? So it was a fun moment in our parenting life when we, I can't remember, we were talking about a trip somewhere or whatever. And, and Noel was like, I've never had a McDonald's hamburger. <laughs> it was the tater was tots. Tater, or tater tots. She's tater like, tots. We... She's like, what are tater tots? Yeah. yeah, we were on a trip and we stopped at Cracker Barrel and yeah. the waitress was like, do you want tater tots? <laughs> we had to explain what, what tater, tater tots, tots were because yeah. all of our other kids have gone to public school. So they'd seen school lunches and all yeah. of that stuff. Yeah. So, but she had not yeah. and we don't buy tater tots. So. <laughs> so that was a little segue, but that was fun. A few of you have asked if we have jobs outside of the homestead? The answer to that is I do, and right now, and Becky's, all of her jobs are here on the homestead. So I work in finance at a large retailer in the area, and when I'm not doing that, so nights, weekends, and mornings, uh, and sometimes lunch breaks, I'm happily here on the homestead helping Becky in the garden or moving animals in, in the pasture or just just whatever. There's an endless supply of, of things to do. There's a fly. Uh, there's a fly in the house because we live on a homestead. It's bugging right. me. Well, for me, I graduated with an art degree. So when my kids were really little, the whole time that they were little on the side, I did uh, portrait commissions for people. I did paintings, um, that sort of thing. And I got a little bit just to the point where I was feeling not completely happy, not happy. with yeah. what I was doing and By how the way, it was going. This painting right here is one that Becky did. Yeah, we'll have to show it so, later. We'll show you a close up later. I made a conscious decision that I wanted to start a blog instead and blog about gardening. And for the most part, that was because the garden at that time was really helpful to me. As I mentioned before, I have some anxiety and depression stuff that I was going through at the time. I still am going through. And part of doing that was to help with my mental stuff. Yeah. And it really did. It helped me a lot. And so I did the blog and that grew into um, doing YouTube. So I have the blog, I have YouTube, I have other social media things that I do as well. I also, uh, and now we started to homeschool the kids. So now I am a teacher as well. And I also do all of the homemaking things at home. So I do all of the cooking and the cleaning with help from the family, of course. Yeah. yeah. Those are my jobs mm -hmm. along with mothering and 
all of that stuff, which yeah. is a full-time job just in and of itself. A couple full-time jobs. It could not be done without her, but also the kids do pitch in a lot. They have mm -hmm. chores. We all have chores uh, to do, and it, it could not function without all six of us working together to do it. So yeah. That leads yeah. into the another question. That leads into another question. About the kids. Once. Which is? What's that one about? Which is, how are your children involved in helping around the homestead? Uh, do they have chores? And do we hire helpers? Do our children enjoy it? And how do we encourage their involvement? So a couple questions that are kind of wrapped up in one. Mm -hmm. um, so our kids have some chores. <laughs> yeah, they do. I'm just trying to think how to say Let, it right. I will say this Yeah, one. yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so what it comes down to as a parent, it's always really hard to figure out what, what sort of jobs do your kids do that they don't get paid for, that they're just like around the house jobs, that yeah. just for, you know, being part of the family, you need to do this. And then there's another set of jobs where it's like, okay, this is above and beyond and we want to pay you for this. Yeah, yeah. So that is how we encourage their involvement is um, our around the inside of the house chores, those aren't paid for, but we do pay our children to help us in the garden. And that's really started a lot bigger once we started to make an income from YouTube, it only felt right to pay the kids for their time. So yeah, so yeah, so that's that's a big motivation for how we encourage them yeah. <laughs> and how they are encouraged Money themselves. Is good encouragement. And, and don't get us wrong. Yeah, there <laughs> there is still plenty of nagging and reminding them because they forget yeah. but, but we're a normal family also from the the book family friendly farming that we mentioned earlier it mentions in there how the kind of the appropriate or the ripe age for a kid to start a business is eight years old and so i was kind of surprised at first but then after thinking it through it just made sense i guess and so the kids have we have helped them and coached them along but they have just started a egg business selling chicken eggs in a nutshell they designed a website thought through all the things that needed to be on there and they have just for the past couple weeks they've been taking orders and and delivering eggs with our help of course um but that that also motivates them and keeps them excited to do chores around here yeah so so uh, someone says was it a big financial investment to start homesteading for us just to get started it was not a huge financial investment where we were living previously we yeah. already had our home there we were on a small lot i think that's a really great way to learn and get started is we didn't have a lot in it at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was what the cost of fencing to keep the deer out, a couple loads of dirt for the garden, and some and raised yeah, beds. The raised raise, beds. the raised beds were expensive, expensive, but you don't have to do raised beds, which at the time I felt like I needed to do because I didn't really know there there was another way. Yeah. But mm -hmm. we did the raised beds. That was a big investment. But we made yeah. back our money in the first year that yeah. we did that. Yeah. yeah that's that's how much money we saved on yeah. food things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the other side of it too, there's obviously different approaches you can take to homesteading. And we knew that we were in this for the long haul. And we wanted this to not only provide for our own family but we wanted we wanted to also have the potential to turn this homestead into a an, an income generating farm by selling produce or meats or you know whatever the case may be so so we have invested more up front in tractors and equipment that'll help us scale this business if it gets to that yeah i think homesteading in and of itself you can do it on a really tight budget yeah you really could it's just for for us we knew we wanted it to have the potential to be a farm possibly and for me i garden at this really like crazy level <laughs> <laughs> at this point point. Yeah. and i didn't start like that i started really small and then just kind of worked my way up so as i have gone upwards in gardening it was just more of like i 
really would love to have more tools that help me in this, that save time and all of that. But those aren't really necessary. In a past video, you mentioned you have anxiety, which I do. <laughs> <laughs> they say, I have anxiety and depression myself. So my question is, how do you work through a slump to get your homestead goals accomplished? I'm going to frame this up. Share it all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's a very broad spectrum. Yes. Yes. Of anxiety levels. Yeah. And different <laughs> things that trigger it and all of that. So that being said, I'm going to share like what helps me, but it may not help anybody else. <laughs> Homesteading and gardening and all of the things that I do on a daily basis related to that really are like medicine and a balm to my soul, <laughs> my anxious mind. Yeah, so it, if I do not get enough time in the garden or doing things that help me in that way, that help my mental wellness, then I go downhill really fast. And so a lot of times that will happen in the winter just because of the nature of it. We're in, stuck inside all day. And so there's not a lot of things. So some things that I do to help during that time is I try and find things that I can get excited about. And some of those things are like, you know, buying seeds or <laughs> just some of the things related to homesteading. To me, that is just something that really helps me a lot. I get really excited about buying seeds. The, when the blackberries that I bought in the middle of the winter, that was one of those things where yeah. it was like an impulse buy just because I was like, this is gonna make me feel better. <laughs> so um, that, but you don't necessarily have to buy things, just doing like a garden plan for me that a lot of times will help. So those are some like very specific things. Other things outside of homesteading that really help me a lot. If I'm feeling really down, I will do a gratitude journal and I try and keep that up because just doing it one day doesn't help. You have to do like for a long period yeah. of time. That is something that's super duper helpful. They've done studies about how helpful that is. The other thing that is really helpful to me is making sure I'm sleeping enough so my anxiety keeps me awake. <laughs> which is like has a really bad effect because if I stay up past a certain hour then the anxiety gets really bad so I try and go to sleep as early as I possibly can force myself to and in order to do that one of the things that I do is I turn off computers at like 9 p.m. in order for me to go to bed at like 10.30 or 11. So no screen time after that, no social media, no nothing, so that my body can naturally calm down and sleep. We got another question about clothes and shoes. What do you guys like, do as far as those things? So he here's the answer to that. <laughs> for the kids, we are blessed by a neighbor who often <laughs> gives us clothing, hand-me-downs from her, Children or kids that are just a step older that has been a huge blessing for us because my Younger kids at least are not picky. So they love the, getting those clothes. It's yeah. like Christmas for them Yeah, thank you neighbor. You know who you are <laughs> As far as clothing for me, I am NOT a shopper I don't really like to shop at all for anything not groceries not clothes None of that except uh, seeds That's one <laughs> Yeah. Seeds, yeah. homesteading yeah. stuff. Okay. Homesteading tools. It's just yeah. really specific yeah, things. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so I have a very minimal closet for that reason, just because I don't like to shop very much. So the things that I do buy, I try and buy high quality things that will last me a long time, and so that I don't have to go and buy more. I, for me, I, I'm kind of I'm turning into my dad. I have found a pair of jeans that I like, and so I buy multiple pairs of those. And he always did that, and I made fun of him, but now I'm turning into him. I can't remember the last time I paid full price for a piece of clothing that I have, so. Cam's always been more of the thrift shopper. Yeah. My husband and I were wondering how you make the things that aren't canned last all year. 
like our potatoes, onions, pumpkin, squash, garlic, etc. Part of the design for this house was to put in a cold room that because we don't have a basement, the cold room mimics as close as we can a root cellar mm -hmm. environment. And, and I'm speaking to the temperature and the darkness, uh, no sunlight, and then also the humidity. Um, it's not perfect, but it's it's definitely an improvement from just storing your stuff, you know, in a in a cold garage, and so that definitely prolongs the life of those vegetables that store well in there. In the cold room, we store the onions and the garlic mm -hmm. and the potatoes in there. So you you have to look at what um, in what conditions do things store best. I store the onions and the garlic in there, even though it's a tiny bit humid for them. Onions like it dry and cold, potatoes like it wet and cold. So it's hard to mimic all of those things in a home environment. Yeah. My onions lasted a long time, surprisingly, this year. So the first part is the conditions that the vegetables are in. And then the second part is what variety you're growing. Certain varieties lend themselves to being stored for longer. And on my blog, I have a list of the varieties that I grow and certain varieties that store well. So I'll link that in the video description. Yeah. Pumpkin and squash, sweet potatoes. I have all of those at room temperature right now and they last all year. Yeah. They last for six to nine months and they're just fine. Yeah. No problem. To echo what you said before, on certain varieties lend themselves better to storage. Yeah. Jack-o'-lantern pumpkins that were you guys are from or that are those will not store at room temperature for six to nine months. Yeah, probably not. But the but the we our squash that we store are the butternut squash. The pumpkins remind me of that variety. The ones it's we have Long there. Island cheese. They're, yeah. they're in the same family, same family. Yeah. of type of squash that yeah. do really well with bugs. They are really bug resistant, but they also last a really yeah. long time. So we just have those on the shelf and they're great. And the sweet potatoes, uh, yeah, those yeah. are interesting crates too. Yeah. So the second half of that question is, do you still use it if it sprouts or do you consume them way before the next season? So yes, we still eat them if it sprouts. If it's yeah. so good, we're eating it. Yeah. We've got, it's March right now and we've got, potatoes that are that are sprouting but mm -hmm. they're they're still good you just you just pick the sprouts off and they're fine yeah. and then the last part of this question how long do does our canned food last the, the the food in jars those will last one to two years we can enough with the intent of using our supply up within a year sometimes we have overlap so a year and a half more or less but but it's generally not recommended to store those more than two years. <laughs> so the thing is that they possibly could last past two years, but there's a few things to keep in mind. One is the lids. <laughs> so I think the lids say now, the ball lids that they last for 18 months, they'll last longer than 18 months. And my, my limit is about three years, I would say. If it's past three years, mm -hmm. I'm gonna dump the food. But thankfully, we have gone through everything yeah. within that three years. I try and use everything up. I try not to waste anything at all. I don't think there's been one jar that has been you know, like, over. Tossed out. Yeah. yeah. We do pretty good. Yeah, so the past, actually, when you pass one year, the quality does start to go down with canning. Past two years, it goes down even further. Yeah. The the stuff inside the jar will get darker and things like that. I've noticed that with some of the jams. Day two of answering questions. <laughs> we got late last night, so yeah. we had to start again. <laughs> okay, so we're back at it. And the next question we are going to answer is, how much a year do you spend at the grocery store? So and we'll, we'll speak in terms of last year, because this will always change as uh, inflation comes and different things and you know whatever but last year we had a monthly grocery budget at the store of four hundred dollars a month and so that equates to about forty eight hundred dollars a year for our family of six 
Uh, most of that is spent on grains, dairy, nuts, and th things that we just legitimately can't grow here, like pineapples, other you know tropical fruits, and then things like olives and olive oil, mm -hmm. and yeah, that kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So next one, Becky's going to answer what percent of food we grow ourselves. Okay. So I made some notes on this. But I have my own opinions about this because I feel like a lot of times people will say percentages, but unless they're weighing all of their food somehow, it's really it's uh, just a guess. Like anybody's a close anybody's yeah. best guess. So for how much of our food we grow ourselves right now? So we grow all of our own vegetables right now, and we were debating about this last night. Yeah. Because of the one exception that I that I thought we were still buying was avocados. We looked it up. Avocado is a fruit. Yeah, a fruit. So yeah. technically <laughs> we grow all of our own vegetables. Yeah. And then uh, fruits, actual fruits right now we we harvested last year very little fruits because this is a new place so fruits take a little bit longer to establish so we bought a lot of our fruit locally just from farmers meat is the next one yeah meat we are happy to say that we now grow 100 percent of our own meat and so it's very nice to have uh, fully stocked freezers uh and especially to hedge against inflation and um just it's just nice to have meat and never have to buy it okay grains we don't grow any of our own grains yet, but that is a goal of mine for the future, something I'd really like to do. I am trying to tackle the vegetables and the fruits first. Vegetables we're good on, but fruit, I would really like to get that to a higher percentage. So I'm putting a lot more of my time and effort into that rather than growing the grains. But it's something that I really want to do in the future, just still doing research on how to make that possible because we don't have a combine to harvest the grains and to make it worth this time i don't i'm just we're just still trying to figure out is that something that is going to be worth it to us for the time and effort we put into it it could it could be something where it's just like we do it just for the experience of doing it but we need somebody to come up with a small scale <laughs> grain harvester and yeah. What's that thing on the outside of like oats? The hole? Yeah, like holding. Something hauling, to de it. Yeah, yeah. de-hauler, all of that yeah. stuff is just things to consider. For the dairy, I don't eat dairy right now. I have on and off in the past. Eating like cultured dairy was okay for a while. And then I just started having major reactions to the dairy. So I cut that out. Yeah. But, but, but me and the kids still enjoy dairy. Uh, we're not chugging gallons of milk because we're just kind of not used to that anymore. But we do love our cheese, especially on pizza and uh, butter and the occasional tub of ice cream. So, so yeah, so we still do occasionally buy dairy at the store too. Yeah. So for that reason, this was another question on there. We do not have a milk cow and we don't have plans of getting a milk cow anytime soon. Yeah. So originally I had planned to do dairy sheep because I can actually consume sheep's milk without too much of an issue. Well, not plain. I've had sheep's, the sheep. Sheep's cheese. Cheese. Sheep cheese, yeah. Sheep. Cheese from sheep. <laughs> sheep cheese. Sheep cheese. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the sheep cheese is actually a little easier on my system. I think because it's a smaller animal, it's more compatible with the human body. But anyways, it's been a little bit easier on me, so I thought initially we might do sheep uh, for dairy purposes. But right now we're just, we have other goals that we want to accomplish first, so it's still a few years out if we decide to go that route. Yeah. Next question, and this is a good one, the R-U-L-D-S. We are members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Self-reliance is a uh, focus and is, is urged by the leaders of our church. And that, that is spiritual reliance and 
uh, temporal self-reliance. And so that has definitely played a big part in the decisions that have led us to do what we do. As far as a, it's, it's highly encouraged to have a year's supply of food. Becky and I did both go to BYU, Idaho. That's where we met. And uh, shortly thereafter got married, so. It's a good place. <laughs> <laughs> We had several questions about books. What books did we use to get started? What are our favorite books? I would actually love to do a video about books because they're my favorite. I love books. It is basically what I have used to gain all of my knowledge. And so to be able to pick just one book is really hard. I feel like everything that I've learned is like a culmination of many books. So yeah, she has a lot of them. Yeah, so I have a lot of books. yeah, I swear we're getting, we have a new book coming every week from <laughs> Amazon or something. So, so we did, we did go to our bookshelf though. And we picked a couple of books yeah, just for the first. sake of this video. Mm -hmm. Um, but if you are interested in a book video, please tell me. So I'll make one. <laughs> I like books. Um, specifically homesteading books. So this one, the Four Season Farm Gardener's Cookbook. So it's, it's basically the first half is gardening, like how to garden, um, very basic, um, really well illustrated as well. And then the second half is how to cook with those vegetables. I have not used a ton of the recipes in the second half of the book though. I've got two. First one is Happy Pigs Taste Better. And this is the one Becky had mentioned uh, or that we talked about in this video prior. Uh, I read this before we got our first batch of pigs. Got this, read it, it was super helpful. Covers everything from feed to environment to uh, farrowing and breeding and, and just and different the different breeds and things like that. And so I read it, then we raised the pigs, and then I read it again, and it was like a brand new book. <laughs> and so it's just funny how it works like that. But that's the first one. Second one is Joel Salatin's Folks, This Ain't Normal. And this is just a very eye-opening and kind of common sense book that in sort of a humorous way, but very like... Matter of fact. Matter of, yeah, very matter of fact just kind of states how screwed up we are in, in like our food system. It was just really eye-opening to see that written down and like, okay, yeah, this is really what I've thought all along, put into words. So yeah. this, one. this one is really good if you are trying to get somebody on board. <laughs> this is yeah. a good book. Uh, I feel like you don't have to read the whole thing to necessarily get the gist of it. Like the, the second half of the book, I was like, eh, but the first half is great. Yeah, so, so. super good book. Yeah, we've recommended it to a few friends and family mm -hmm. members and they've all really loved it. So yeah. at least all the, that's all the questions that we are going to answer here. Uh, <laughs> so that the video doesn't end up like three hours long. Yeah, yeah. I, when we started reading through them at the beginning, I was like, this is gonna be a 45 minute video. So I'm interested once the editing's done, how how long it actually is. So I hope it's yeah. not too long. There are so many good questions and I really appreciate like the time and the thought that goes into them. So I am going to try and address some of these either in future videos or on my blog. You guys gave me a lot of good ideas for future blog posts. That's really where I go a little more in depth in the details of what I'm doing. On video, it's a little bit more difficult for me to do that just because it, I guess it just takes a little bit longer uh, to produce those educational type of videos. Whereas if I'm just having the camera follow me along and it's not quite as long and we're getting into like the, our busier time of year. So that's why you guys are getting more vlogs lately is because of that. I'm just getting busy, yeah. so. Uh, homesteading is a, it's a definitely a lifestyle for us. Uh, it's something that we both really enjoy. And so that's nice to have, uh, have a partner and a family to do it with really for both of our sakes. Um, and uh, yeah, we enjoy it. It is a lot of work, but as I said, <laughs> we, 
we enjoy it. And yes, there are some late nights and long days, and that's just part of it. And then we, you know, yeah, we enjoy the winter time because it's kind of a little break from all the craziness. Um, I would yeah. say I'm kind of the opposite. I actually, <laughs> well, uh -huh. you like the winter time. I feel like uh, I'm really depressed yeah. in the winter time. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I would say for me, it really never feels like work just because it's something I enjoy. Yeah, it's good. I mean, every once in a while, if you get to like a monotonous task, then yeah, it's a little bit of work. But for the most part, it's something that really brings me a lot of joy that I feel a lot of fulfillment in. Um, that has really brought us closer together as a family. In the world that we live in now, it's just something that is really nice to have that skill set, to have the knowledge, yeah. and just feel more peaceful about life because you have some skills on how to take care of yourself from, you know, food on up. So, yeah, yeah, cool. So, thanks for watching, everybody. Mm -hmm.